The fraction given in the first example is 1 out of 3. 1 third. But there are lots of ways of writing 1 third, and these are called equivalent fractions. Now, if you look at this simple diagram, if I draw a line through the centre of that diagram, it is still the same fraction, but there are now two parts shaded out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are therefore the same fraction. So what I've done is I've effectively doubled the top and the bottom of the fraction. And if you times the top and bottom of a fraction by the same amount, it's still the same fraction. So I could times this one by any number I want, so e.g. 10. As long as the top and bottom are times by the same number, so this would become 20 over 60. And all these fractions are all equivalent. So if I was asked to find some fractions equivalent to 3 fifths, then I can times it by any number I like. So e.g. I could times it by 3. As long as you times the top and bottom by the same number, so 3 times 3 is 9, and 5 times 3 is 15. These fractions are therefore equivalent. And another one I could times by 2. Top and bottom, the answer becomes 18 over 30. All these fractions are equivalent. They describe the same fraction. Now, we can times by the same number. We can also divide by the same number. So, for example, in number 3, I could divide by 2. Both numbers have a factor of 2. If I divide by 2, I get to 10 over 25. These fractions are the same fraction. I could divide further. I could divide by 5. Because both these numbers have 5 as a factor. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And again, this is another equivalent fraction. And in fact, this is actually the fraction in its lowest form. The reason being, I cannot divide by any other number without achieving decimals. So, to summarise, we can times or divide a fraction by any number we like, and they are still the same fraction. However, if you divide a fraction down into its lowest form, then it is its fraction in its simplest form.